infinite ammo. Okay. Right. Hi, welcome to another Resident Evil IS episodic discussion. Today we are talking about Resident Evil 3 Remake. Uh, something that I have been waiting for for a very long time, and I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, so I'm your host, Biodevil underscore Dom. Otherwise, you could just call me Dom or Biodevil Dom. I'm joined by Renegade Operative. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi. I like Ren. boobs. This man is muted. We're already off to good start. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I, I, I said I like boobs, but apparently my mic didn't pick it up, so... Okay. All right. Uh, so after that, I'm joined by Devil Hunter James. What's good, everybody? And then after that, Mr. Brandle, Sir Brandle, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm eating Doritos. Nice. <laughs> Can I have some? Full, full on L LMG. Fuck off. Yeah. I was going to say LMG. MLG. Uh, not in that order. <laughs> uh, after that, I'm joined by Arlena. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hello. And then after that, Dan. Hey guys, I'm here to I'm here to talk about RE3 remake, or as I like to call it, RE3 Nemesis Tentacle Boogaloo. Alrighty. And then last but not least, Drew. Hey, what's up guys? Alrighty, straight to the point. So, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to read off the first question, and then uh, we'll just kind of get rolling from there. Uh, let's start this podcast by talking about some of the negative aspects of Resident Evil 3 Remake. How do you feel about the content omissions, such as puzzles, cut areas, bosses, weapons, less costumes, mercenary mode, and live selection, of course, etc.? That just uh, um, listed them all. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. pretty much. Uh, so... <laughs> So in terms of just the cuts and omissions, um, yeah, I mean, I will say it is disappointing to see that like some of my favorite aspects of the original Resident Evil 3 are not there. Uh, I especially miss the Dead Factory from the original, but at the same time, I do feel like there are some things that they did add in that or, or changed in a certain way that do like work well enough for this remake. Obviously, I would have taken more content and especially like reimagined like content from like original like the original cows and uh, redone puzzles or completely altered puzzles that weren't in the original kind of like, like in remake one. Um, same thing with like bosses, like if they replaced the old bosses with completely new ones or uh, expanded upon those old bosses, I would have loved that. Uh, so it, so it is very much disappointing and also like less costumes like we only have the classic dlc costume no, no unlockables like in re2 remake which is kind of weird now, uh, that, um, that's real. <laughs> we have um the stars outfit that's literally the only unlockable well, costume you have yeah yeah let me rephrase we only have yeah we only have the one costume outside of that but other than that it, it is just dlc for uh for carlos at least it is just DLC. There's no, nothing unlockable for him, and everything for Jill is it's one unlockable, one DLC. So it does kind of suck. Uh, live selection, and, and this is kind of, for me, at least the most disappointing, because I feel as though they could have easily done this as a more subconscious thing, uh, rather than how it was done in the original, where the game stops for a moment and gives you like a good, like what, five to ten seconds to make your choice and then go. Um, so it is kind of disappointing to see some of that stuff go, but, uh, who wants to go next? Actually, I'll go. Now, this is making things, um, clear from the start. I will sound better, because Resident Evil 3 is my favorite, and my god, they fucked up. Now, um, the two biggest problems I have with the remake is the, um, cut areas, and the lack of live selection. Now Don mentioned like um the new areas um you no know, work or whatever. Now I actually do disagree with that notion, especially since one the amount of areas they cut in comparison um in comparison to the original, and the few areas they add, those few areas are literally can be done in five minutes or less, like just by comparison. Whereas like the Dead Factory, that's like a whole segment of the even game. Uh, that could be done in at least like 15 minutes on a slow run. Whereas in Resident Evil 3, like Nest 2, 
that could be done literally in like five minutes. A bit saturation on that one though, but it's really short area. It's like yeah, it's like eight or ten minutes. I would say. So the areas they replace, um, they replace quote unquote are definitely not um are enough to um fill in the gap for the cut content in um areas. For the record, the la Nest 2 is not a thing in RE3, right? It was not no, originally. It's no, so completely I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they, obviously they rushed, but I feel like they got extra lazy and said, ah, you know, RE always ends in a lab. RE2 ended in a lab. Let's just take the assets from RE2 remake and shove it in here. That's kind of how it comes off to me as. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, uh, I could live with certain changes like no they could at least add more bosses like the grave digger but i'm fine with them like cutting mercenaries so long as they like at least add it back and made it more grander because operation mad Jaggle, for the most part could have been its own thing if they added later like make it more expensive add more characters or whatever which clearly oh, wow. not doing that i don't care if it's co-op or not i'm fine with being solo uh, but uh, of, uh to kind of go mm -hmm. off of that notion they could have made, like turned it into like a prequel setup where you play as the uh, mercenaries from ubcs before exactly. you play as jail. So Yeah, they Yeah, they jumped well on that one. Uh overall, um most of the negative aspects though hurt the game more than you know, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm just a little upset about this game. But who, who someone else could go. Okay, so here's my controversial opinion, but it's all gonna be understood after I finish saying it. I don't believe the game was rushed because one of the things that people need to be aware of is that when they use the term to describe this game in development they said that they were reimagining it more than resident evil 2 and i already knew that was going to be a red flag for the people that you know deem this as a remake and everything because they were taking more creative liberties and more risks instead of trying to go back and add in things from the original game that would expand the experience. I think uh, someone said it best. I think it was on Let's Talk Resident Evil. Uh, he said that this is the game that they wanted to give us without considering everything else in between. So that's why there's things like omitted content because um, they just left it on the cutting room floor, but they also, um, the performance and everything is like really well done in this game it's not like a fucking buggy mess or it's not terrible to play in like any stretch of the imagination it's just that this content is not in the game that's the that's the basis of re3 like we had these things like mercenaries live selection uh the costumes and everything and it's like where are they uh so they gave us the game that they wanted to give but at the price of taking all these things and not putting it in the game so uh i i still like this game for what it is I, I do think that the action just works for what it is uh but i do think that all the negatives you know it's no incentive to go back and replay it like after maybe like a few playthroughs as opposed to the original where it's like live selection changes the entire game <laughs> no i understand that notion like no yeah it's gonna be a reimagining or whatever at that point you should just call it resident evil reimagining three you know but like that that still doesn't um excuse like you no know, how much they how much fat they cut in comparison to the source material you know i think it goes for both because i mean we, we like to make the argument that they didn't cut anything from um any of the other games like prior to this but they definitely were rearranging things at re2 and they kind of rearranged some small things in Remake 1, so it's not 100% fully the same. But the problem there is that um, for at least Remake 1, um, they decided to keep everything else in between, which is why it's like probably the best remake because it's like completely one for one with new stuff added on top of it. Yeah, all I ask is for it at least to be faithful as possible, which Remake 1 did that on top of it, adding more lore. Whereas here, no, now with the new information we got, they're just retconning shit in just because, you know, or change stuff that, that didn't need to be changed or doesn't make the, sense. The Nikolai stuff was the we one of the weirdest stuff. I do not get why they changed all that around. You mean yeah. with him being a money man and everything? All that. Or the fact that, you know, uh, spoilers, he's left to die. Like, um, that was never confirmed nor denied. Some... I, no, it was confirmed that he lived, right? Didn't he get away? 
He, yeah, he lives. He so does why, get away. So why does he... I, I feel like they only killed him because they didn't ever bother to use him for anything else in the series afterward. Someone mentioned There's, that it's a helicopter in the background, and he... Yeah, it's probably, like a helicopter. There's this cell helicopter, but um, that right there um, opens up another can of worms because um, we all know Ada survives. Ada skips the city because mm -hmm. of um, Umbrella Chronicles because she skips uh -huh. a helicopter. That since that did decide to wreck on or change a lot of shit though, that could be Ada and Nikolai in a helicopter. Oh, that would be weird because Ada kind of like escapes by herself. Oh man, it's exactly. so weird. She with the didn't wreck escape by herself per se because um she um just hit hitch a ride on a um cargo ship from uh, another prominent villain in um that game. Mm -hmm. So hmm. uh. Yeah, like if they really want to, though, they can say like, "Oh, uh, Ada found a helicopter um, before the city explodes and found I'll Nikolai." Laugh if, uh, for remake, you know how RE4 the original has like a summary of what happened in Raccoon City before the game starts. Yeah, I will laugh if they include that in the remake. They like, ah, oh, Nikolai got on a helicopter, blah blah blah. I'm like, all right, Capcom. Don't whatever. be surprised because that's like the quick summary. So I, I yeah, honestly that's why I'm like, it. I bet they will do that. But yeah, uh, anyone else on this? I think I one thing for me when it comes to like some negative aspects is like during some like cut some of the cutscenes, you don't even know if you're like running like when you're being chased by a nemesis, especially like when she's on the bridge and she's being chased by a nemesis. Like some of that, I'm just like, okay, am I running? Is this a cutscene? I don't know what's going on because <laughs> I'm pushing some of the buttons and I'm like, okay, maybe this is a cutscene. It would be a whole lot easier to tell if it was one. Instead of it just being in like a ca like in a camera angle that's like you're thinking this is gameplay and I'm like okay whatever <laughs> and one thing I will also say is that I never played the original I'm gonna want to go ahead and get that out of there because when it was originally released it was released in '99 I was born '96 I was like a wee little kid when that first came out so. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say that. Uh, most of us play it like way after his original release. Heck, I'm born '97, '96, <laughs> so there you go. I play. I haven't at all until the remake. I play both, and there's things that I like in the original, and there's things that I don't like in the original. But um, like the emergency oh. dodge, I, I thought that was not that good in the original, to be honest. Yeah, let's say that for number two because that's a positive aspect, you know. Mm -hmm, yeah, uh, but one thing that I mentioned in chat is that the weird camera zoom during the boss fights, like, what is that? Like, why oh, is yeah. it like this? Yeah. I can't tell if it's a glitch or not, but regardless, it's really not helpful. I cannot see past Jill, and it's annoying. It got really annoying during the boss fight with Nemesis, where he's like spawning the zombies in the arena, and you can't yeah, the, see the... them. The, do the second or whatever dog fight it is yeah that fight was so much harder because i couldn't see and then i got bit from behind and killed so that's that's lovely on inferno does it have to do with the with the gun reticle or i don't no, know no 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 this is this the angle of the camera like it's oh, where it faces with jill it zooms in more on her and it's like i can't see for shit I think the hunters were more annoying, in my opinion. Bro, oh don't God. get me started. Oh Please, my God. Please, like, like I would do perfect dodge one, and then I would get killed, but like right behind, I would just throw my controller. Like, oh, are you freaking Dude, kidding? On my me? first my, playthrough, I got yeah. insta killed left and right. Like, yep, me, too. Seven oh, deaths. me too, because I did, I couldn't recognize which move, the which was like the lunge that kills you, and I was like, oh, I'm at full health. I'll be nope. Always so they the changed it now to where it doesn't matter as long as they're doing that move you will die regardless of health I think it's worse with the uh, gammas in particular because they have the instant You yeah. can't even run past them. You, you have to deal with them. them. Like, what you the got fuck? you you literally have to deal with them You can dodge perfect dodge them You can but it's in my it's opinion. It's such a it's such a risk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're better off you're just not, killing them Unless you're not um not consistent with the dodges against the gammas you have to kill them yeah, they're so they and you know what's the funny part? They put them intentionally in these cramped spaces so you have to fight them. Hmm. My uh, I think my biggest problem with like actually since we're on the subject still, uh, like the hunters in particular, I don't like the gamma redesign. 
uh especially yeah. knowing that like if you look at the unlockable uh concept art that's available in game uh the original like hunter like gamma designs were still there like it, i think also the original hunter beta uh designs were also still there and it's just like why was this stuff cut if, if you already made the design for it 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 just doesn't necessarily make sense uh and now that I think about it too, uh, like some of the cut areas, like or even cut enemies, like they were, they're in concept art. Like they did have like concept art that somewhat implies that spiders might have been in the game. They implied that you would have been going to places like the boutique and the uh, the gas station, and that you would be doing things there. Uh, crows were actually going to be a thing, and also just the general layout of the streets were, were going to be much wider, and, and uh, there's going to be much more to explore than what we got. So, uh, this one also... thing, too, they lied about one thing, though. Um, you remember the um, Dario character um, you run to in the beginning of the game? Yeah, they said he's going to be an important character in the, throughout the game. Mm. Oh, he's yeah. not <laughs> that important for about uh, five seconds. Yeah, yeah, until he, he... D dies in that big explosion. You don't even see him die in the remake. You don't see him yeah. getting eaten by zombies either. I'm like, that's kind of disappointing. You can no, shoot one thing. He got incinerated. Yep. Because in the, in the original game, you you come back and you see that he's yeah, dead, you right? You can go back. Like, um, that's, uh, you don't have to go back because um, by the time um, you try to go back, though, you probably be halfway done with the game, um, the game or at least that portion of the game. Yeah. Yeah, there's no reason for you to go back unless you were curious. But, but yeah, they do we'll... have the detail of him being eaten, right? Yeah, yeah. The zombies killed him. If you go back to the warehouse, yeah, that's in a shame. Re... That's not that's not even in there. Nope. In the remake, um... he basically tells you to fuck off, and then if you try to shoot the uh, container, he's all like, "I'm gonna get my brother-in-law. He's a fucking lawyer." Herder, <laughs> like, I'm sure your lawyer wants to come out here during an outbreak. Sure, totally. You know what would have been really cool in the remake? If we would have got the option to shut down Nikolai while he's trying to get away in the helicopter like the original. That would have been so satisfying. I would have loved that because it's like... I, I like that you had the option to either... Depending on what you did at the bridge, I believe, if you push Nemesis or if you, like, jump down, you could either have Nikolai alive or dead at the end of the game. Yep, if you yeet off on um, Nemesis, uh, Nikolai dies, but if you jump off yourself, uh, he lives until you get to that moment where you can shoot him down yourself or you just let him go. Oh, so his his death was always anonymous? No, his yeah. his, um, his death was confirmed alive, as far as I'm concerned. Because apparently the ending where Barry comes in and saves you, like, no, and you don't shoot him down, that's canon. Mm -hmm. Is originally, as far as I'm concerned. But here, his death is uh, unknown. Yeah, it's still the remake's definitely unknown if he survived yeah. or not. Okay, good. Yeah, and then Barry does not come in with the chopper. That which was is also... my biggest disappointment. I was so mad. <laughs> Weird, dude. It's like I was uh... so mad. That was the connective tissue. Um, from like as opposed to like just Jill being there, that was also a connective tissue of like RE one with him showing up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Was, uh, in the original, it's the context for him coming in he he basically wanted to like re-earn his trust with his uh his comrades um, yeah. like he literally told his family that he had to go and, and like rescue them because like he just felt like he he had to make up for like betraying them during the first game so i don't know when it happens but it's a cool little easter egg i think in the original um there's a radio that you could check and you could hear like barry's voice i don't know which one it is though but um <laughs> that's like one signal to hear that he's on his way so okay. yeah just a lot of cool I, I stuff know. Yep, you can check one of the radios and you hear him say, Jill, Jill, come in. Someone needs help. And then it just cuts off from there. I think I remember hearing something about that. It's, it's very obscure because you got to check it again in order to... I think it's the one where the missile strike commences and Carlos just gives up. He's like, screw it. I'm going to try to get the other chopper. Mm. Um, I'm just going to say this. Like... I don't like hate hate RE3 remake. 
I'm just mostly disappointed at the content being cut out, like the Clock Tower and um, some of the en- memorable memorable enemies, like the Grave Digger, like everybody else was saying. It's just if stuff wasn't cut out, like if it wasn't cut out, I I can 100% sure the game could have been a maybe a bit longer. And how they um. How they betrayed Nikolai, I just didn't take him that seriously, really, in this game. He just he was just a Joe character. James Bond villain. <laughs> yeah, it's every Russian is a Bond villain. villain. I like, like money. He, like, oh my god, like, near the end, I'm like, you could have just gotten on the helicopter, and you could have just ran right away with that freaking vaccine. Like, Actually, you know what? I'm going to disagree. He fits right in. Resident Evil is so dumb and goofy. He actually fits more now, in my opinion, than he did before. <laughs> <laughs> at Res- Ari's n- and not being ashamed of being over the top so I'm like you know what yeah that's Works. something I gotta agree on I mean yeah you could be over the top though but it still has his own serious elements and Nikolai is definitely not one of them it's the thing is he tries to be serious but he's such a cocky jerk that he comes off as more of a Bond villain yeah, which is why I prefer the original like you know that man was head of toe mysterious dark and mysterious I prefer I just preferred him Prefer the fact that we got when we got the, when you know near the very end of the game where we got we were got the chance to shoot him right. I said I said oh goodness gracious finally we get to shoot him and then I find out oh wait oh wow we shot him in the arm okay. I know I, I, I actually too. screwed that I actually screwed that cutscene up the first time because I was curious if there's an alternate thing like if there what happens and you just die. I was like oh that's disappointing I thought there was like a second thing that would happen. The, um, so I flubbed that the first time around. The one thing I will say in terms of uh, Nikolai that I, I, I kind of, I don't like the way that they portrayed him entirely. I do prefer the original. Yeah. But there is one thing I will say they did uh, somewhat interesting, and that is like have like this kind of tension between Mikhail and, and Nikolai, where uh, Mikhail clearly does not trust Nikolai, and he very much su- suspects that he's, like, doing some shit. And I think that would have worked a lot better if Nikolai was just more mysterious and kind of, like, you know, played along with the idea that, yeah, things just don't add up, and, you know, like, you try to, you know, play dumb. So. Um, what was that kid's name that, that barely had any lines that Nikolai shot in the remake? Murphy, I think. Yeah, Murphy. Did he? Well, did he have a lot of um screen time back in the original, or did he? Did he, did he... Uh, he had more screen time in the original because of how the last election worked. Oh, okay. Either you see him alive, um, or you're in, and then Nikolai kills him, or if you do one change, um, Carlos um sees Murphy, but he's zombified and you have to kill him. I preferred that a lot more than the one where it's like Nikolai just kills him and his body's on the floor. He's like, uh, yeah, yeah, he was a zombie anyway, so he tripped had and to fell get... on a gun. He <laughs> fell on a banana. Man, that voice had was to go really like, all of two though? seconds. Yeah, that was a waste of um photo scan resources. And the man was here in there. For like he was here just to be shot, and that was the end of it. Yeah, that was. I'm like, I said, oh, really? That's the waste. That went, man, that I would that... assume if he was bit, then yeah, you're unless you're a main character, you're infected. I I was assuming he was infected because he was he was already down on the ground or for hurt. I I think if it was just like if live selection was in that game, then maybe uh, the choice could have been like Nikolai stays with him, but you could also try to stay with Murphy and whatever choice you make, uh, whether you leave or stay, it will either have him turn into a zombie later when you go back or have Nikolai kill him uh, if you try to like, you know, leave the area. Yeah, I, I also think like, you know, again, going back to like saying you know, if Nikolai was a lot more subtle like he was in the original, that would have worked a lot better for his character. Because then, like, you wouldn't know if you should... Well, those of you that have already played the original RE3, like, yeah, you would already know not to trust him. But for, like, newcomers, right, they wouldn't know, like, should I trust this guy? Is he is he faithful? I don't know, right? The more he does his evil smiles, the more obvious it's, it gets. I, I just laugh every time he yeah. does that smile. <laughs> this is a man, the only thing they gave him a shading and grin. <laughs> that's all I see. I just start laughing because this, I said that one scene where he smiled at Mikhail. That's it. Okay, I said this is gonna be me, Morthy. <laughs> he kind of didn't even care that much that he got discovered by Jill and all that. He's just like, ah, you know, we're gonna make a game out of this. 
Yeah, it, much. it's not after me. <laughs> also, I guess we're, so we're already kind of segued into number two with the positive aspects. I'm gonna say something. Yeah. Uh, the dodge roll. You wanna, is uh, you wanna read off number two? I'll read it. I'll read it. Name some of the positive aspects that you've enjoyed about RE3 Remake. What are the aspects that got improved upon from the original, in your opinion? I was about to say the dodge rolling is awesome. I cannot play RE2 anymore because of that. Like, it's, yeah, such, I a, agree. it's such a drastic improvement. What do you guys think? Uh, I pretty much agree. Ash. Yeah, that's, that's an agree. Also, um... Aside from like gameplay aspects, so one of the things I actually do appreciate over the original was some of the side characters actually got more, or main characters too, got um, more uh, attention to detail. Like Tyrell is MVP yes. in that game. Yes, I was going to make a joke that like Tyrell in the original game, he he's you barely know who he is. That you don't know who he is, and then he blows up. up. He just blows yeah, he's up. Like the guy, the black dude that got blown up by the Russian. That's all he is in the original <laughs> game. That, that's yeah, it. it. That's all you know about ways. him. He, no, he, he blows himself up. He um, liquid light shoots him, but um, he blows himself up. Or depending on or, uh, last yeah. selection, he when if he opens the um vault, he gets blown that way. That's the one that Ren got in his playthrough. So that's the one I remember. Oh yeah, yeah. He opened the vault and then he just died. So that's just fucking. Ren's funny. like, well, now he's extra black. <laughs> yeah, he was. No. Also, um, also, James, your favorite side character. Yeah, it's probably Tyrell because I'm like, hey, he's the only one who's being a bro Same. around here besides oh, no, no, Carlos. I, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, uh, Bastard and Daniel Bard. Bard. Oh, <laughs> Daniel Bard. Was he even in the original? He's new, right? No. He's like, no. he's no, super he's new. new. Um, that man had the greatest voice line delivery of being an <laughs> arrogant douche I have ever heard in Resident Evil. Give him a raise. He's not even Albert Wesker. I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard. This nigga said, no, <laughs> this, this dude said, go back. To your college nurse degree job or whatever, I'm like, damn, something like that. He basically said she has a lowly station as a nurse. I need help, Re I need, I need some help over here, Revenue Two, dude. Yeah, he was like, he was like, basically like telling that nurse that she was like a, um, <laughs> was so was like funny. a, a bed She's, changing like nurse. Yeah, bed changing, place. bed changing college grad nurse. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Like, so basically, he, he was saying like, "Yeah, you, you, you just fucking replace shadow." Yeah, on beds so one question: He took out beds. a flamethrower. Um, yeah, that that dude deserves a raise. That was that was good. That for was a funny. And his part, it made me laugh. And I was he, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to laugh or take him seriously because he's just some nerdy science guy and he's trying to talk mad shit. Any more Tonight? positives, gentlemen? I um, do like. Um, but, I do like the some of the changes to Carlos actually. Uh, granted, I still do prefer the original, but I I think the like more screen time and just being able to like hear like his sort of reaction to some of the things that he's saying is great. Uh, especially when you're going through the RPD and and he sees like the welcome Leon uh, sign in the uh, the offices and he's all like. Oh, bet he had a great first fucking day or whatever it was. Like <laughs> he has another. He actually has another oh. comment too, because isn't it Leon's uniform or someone's uniform? You know, yeah. down the stairs. Yeah, yeah, he says he says someone missed their uniform, something like that. Someone forgot to get dressed in their blues or something like that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also, another Leon reference, actually. Also, the other the other thing with may the not, door, like may or may not be a Leon reference. May you know, or it may not depend on your how you, um how you start off as Leon. It's my guess, at least. Also, his one comment with the door in the RPD, like, here's a weird fucking door in the Tyrell. <laughs> I fell out laughing. <laughs> Tyrell oh, yeah, I'm like, see, at least somebody in this universe knows all these weird puzzle doors are stupid, and they were not at all practical. Exactly. And then, Tyrell, and then Tyrell's in the background, just leave it. We need to go find Dr. Bard. <laughs> oh, Bard. <laughs> my there. favorite line from him is, like, he's a ballsy mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. There is, um, there is one thing that I kind of like and also dislike uh also in the rpd when you're when you're as carlos like the wall that gets blown up in the um in the uh, shower room yeah like, there's Shaman some connection Nemesis. to there is some connection to re2 however i really dislike the fact that it was not nemesis bursting through that wall or the wall upstairs and i think it was it carlos have been, <laughs> it was, i think yeah. it would have been a lot better if it, it was, was definitely you know, carlos I think it would have been a lot better if if it had been like Jill going through the RPT to get certain things taken care of, 
her having to deal with zombie Brad and then also having to deal with, with Nemesis bursting through certain like walls in the RPD. And Nemesis should have killed Brad and he should have came back as a zombie when oh, that happened. Well, rest. Yeah. Say that, say that thought for, um, let me get to Nemesis because I'm going to rant about that actually. Oh, I, uh, I knew um, Brando was getting all his guns out for that one. Mm. But uh, well, otherwise, I do I do like the kind of co some small connections that they did make to from going from RE3 to RE2. So I, I did like when Marvin got like bit by Brad. I thought that was a nice little connection. I, that I was still, a good connection. Yeah. Although oh, it does yeah. kind of wreck on out on outbreak. So that's outbreak. kind of a problem, actually. Yeah. You don't see the well and you don't see rita either so it's like if they did do an outbreak game like how would it happen now they have that to whole... write it to now it oh. yeah well like the one way they could do it is well um brad not brad um what's his face marvin doesn't get bit until the, obviously at that very moment where so all the events take place where you know they try to get everybody out because you still see cops alive and um carl's segment yep so maybe that could have been the aftermath of um uh, getting everybody out no so they can write it to work though but Problem is, they're not going to. Yeah, it is Capcom. Uh, I yeah. did like the Carlos punch. That was the best thing about his little segments, punching zombies out in like the haymaker I fashion. Shit out of the hunter, man, he deserved it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, oh. yeah, that's where I is literally that... used it the most is on the hunter because he's always jumping in. Oh, me. Those hunters, man. Oh. Dom, pun Dom punched the hunter through a door in the hospital. And that was funny as, shit. as he probably deserved. Yep. <laughs> if funny. there's one thing I like about the game is more interaction between carlos and jill like that's something that um re2 lacked in my opinion oh damn it there was something i was gonna say for negative aspects but i guess i'll save it for the end unless it's in here somewhere i'll see is there any other uh, positive aspects that we should talk about or or just um, like uh, i would say the graphics are a lot more lively than re2 like i like yeah, the yeah. neon I was gonna point that out it's a year difference and yet the game looked a lot better yeah more Super color Col R yeah re3 that, i was gonna say that too re3 has a lot more color in comparison to i know i know Renz was not a fan like when dmc5 had the saturation issue so it seems like they're learning yeah i i, I like the neon lights and everything and how the shops looked it looked pretty damn good Uh, uh, yeah, so I think we're done with number two. Number three. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll do it. <clears throat> Alrighty, go for it. How do you feel about the plot and characterization um, in the remake? Do you think it's better or worse compared to the original? Oh, um, I would say it's one. worse, but at least far as like on um, plot, but for characterization, it's um better and worse. It de literally depends on the character because we already yeah, mentioned we... Tyrell. And Nikolai. You mentioned Carlos. Nikolai, yeah, that's worse. We touched a bit, yeah. So, Jill. Now, Jill is either or. I prefer original Jill, but um, new remake 3 Jill is like, it's unassailable. Why is she so pissed? I mean, whatever, you know? Oh. Yeah, you go ahead. I was going to say, this actually does, this does answer, uh, this is a question I was waiting for, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but as far as plot's concerned, I want to say it's worse because it pretty much feels like um, like a pseudo retread of what RE2 tried to do, especially when you get to the end with the whole nest lab and whatnot. I felt like it, it was turning from like a survival story to more of like a conspiracy theory type story, if that makes sense. I don't know. What are you going to say, James? Oh, uh, we might as well bring this up now since we have characterization. Um, Jill with the constant swearing is really annoying. At yeah, first, it that's didn't, something... I, I usually I'm usually not bothered by swearing. I'm like, yeah, I swear all the time. It's a, not a big deal. The game's rated M, but it feels really forced, and it got on my nerves to such an annoying ass degree. I cannot. Oh wait, she, you she swears swear at all much in She original. swears about everything in that game. It's got really annoying. As you, you reminded me. Um, fuck, this is actually a negative aspect. Uh, I was actually watching a streamer spear on her last night. Yep. And we were talking about this, but the placement for um, I'll give you stars line. Yes, I think yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. that several Absolutely times. Absolutely terrible. Uh, oh, that I was think, bad. Like especially, I want to know what is it with RE games though. But if you're in the middle of a dialogue and you get hit, that shuts off the whole conversation. It happens even in Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> I didn't understand. Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Good. Like it's so annoying. Like I'm, oh, I want to hear the dialogue. Whack. 
The thing that with me with the stars line, it's like, okay, you said that and you're still running. There's no punchline to that. Oh, what the fuck? Oh. Andre. Yeah, I... Hey, Andre. Oh. Hi, how's it going? I, um... But yeah, I was I... gonna say, there, there's no punchline to it. And it just comes off as random. You can go ahead. Yeah, and like, the mo... Yeah, I was, Sorry, I was... Yeah. Okay, you, know, you go ahead, Dom, you go ahead. I know we got yeah, a lot to say on this one. Yeah, I was gonna say that as far as, like, the Star's line in particular goes, like, that's my favorite line in the original game, and to see that it was just reduced down to, like, a part that doesn't really make sense, especially when you have it replaced with take the fucking hint, like... Yeah, I, what I don't, swearing? <laughs> like, you know, I don't mind the like, characters swearing. That's not a problem, it just, I think... I think the bigger problem is more so how consistently they're swearing. Because, like, the characters did swear in, in pretty much all the games at one point or another. It's a matter of when they did it and how often they did it. It was way more sparing in the older Resident Evils by comparison. They got a bit too much in Remake 3. I think that, I think when you curse a lot or, like, when there's a lot of swearing in games, it gets old after a while. Like Ethan, for example. Oh, God. I will say one, one last thing before I let Brandon go again. Um, I think the, the the problem with the swearing is that, like, you know, again, I don't particularly mind it, but it's just how con consistent, how consistently done it is. And I think whoever was writing the dialogue for this game clearly does not understand how Americans speak or how they, you know, yeah. like how they talk in general. Mm. Also, can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can, yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't have much to say. On, well, I mean, I, I enjoy the characterizations of uh, Resident Evil Three, but like what everyone else said, the swearing is just is it happened a lot at RE Two as well. Like randomly, Leon sees us like fucking 1,000 zombie and then all of a sudden he's saying what, what the, fuck? the fuck yeah, it's yeah so... I'm like what do you mean yeah. what the fuck you should be used to this fight now like, and that that's just reused dialogue because now I could get, yeah I, yeah that's dumb but I just reused dialogue though but at least in RE2 though it wasn't like how they did it in 3 yeah there we go that's, that's why I'm not really bothered with Leon's dialogue much it's it's some characterizations that are better than others because like people were saying earlier the side characters are done really well in this game and um outside of all the swearing like you really can relate to the main character like jill but it's just too much it's too obsessive and i hope that re4 like i don't mind swearing to some extent because that oh, game didn't have it but i can't i can't imagine if they did an re4 remake and then leon's just saying like oh fuck this fuck you fuck that i, I doubt it I don't know if leon I was hope... campy that's why he was charming in re4 i know i know i expect things to change in four but if it's gonna be more excessive swearing it's kind of gonna ruin the character to some extent it is it's really and going to make leon less charming I think, with five i think in terms of Mm -hmm. and Carlos a lot as characters but I feel like they kind of dropped the ball in Nikolai because the voice actor does a good job with him it's just I don't know he just doesn't really feel too much like an antagonist he kind of just feels like he's there just for the sake of it compared to the original game but that's all I have to say on the matter we call them a Bond villain, basically. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Basically. I, I, was gonna, I was gonna go off of really quick off of uh, James's point too. I think that in terms of like how Leon would be handled in like an RE4 remake, um, the other kind of issue with that is that if they have him like swearing, it, it just wouldn't really make sense. Like to an extent, like some of the aspects that um, that Dante has in RE4, like that sort of. Or, Dante has in DMC one, I should say. I was about to say your brain just. <laughs> <Dante. laughs> uh, but Le Leon, Leon kind of, Leon kind of has some of those campy aspects of Dante, like from DMC one in R in RE four because they were you know cut from the same cloth, so to speak. So, 
So at least to me, like, I think that would make sense to keep the, like, somewhat of the campiness, but not, like, have him act the way that he does in R2. Yeah, like, if his swearing was sparing, like, okay, he sees the chainsaw guy coming out of left field, I might say, oh, fuck, right? Yeah. That I could understand. When it's some serious shit, like, okay, it's a horror, it's actually a horror movie. <laughs> I understand, but if it's every stupid Ganado that walks by me and he swears, it's gonna get annoying. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I you'd have Brandon, to be used uh, to it by now. Also, yeah. I think Brandon wanted to uh, say, say I, don't, I don't know if he forgot what he was going to say, because everybody kind of talked over him. No, it was with the stars line, though. Also, it's like, no, they could have placed it better, but it's all good now. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, man, why just is so I don't know why they didn't just shove it at the end of the game, like the original. I don't, what was the point in changing it? Didn't someone, like, make an edit of the line being said at the end of the game? I swear someone yeah. did it. Yes, I, think I did. did. Somebody yeah, put the I voice did. line over it as, like, a weird video edit. I did. <laughs> like, what? Actually. What made the line so special in the original is because um, you had this giant stalker chasing your ass around the thing, around the city, and whatnot, and you finally give him back his own medicine using the same dialogue he does, and boom, it's like perfect execution. Like, why why did it change that? Like, I mean, if stars like, runs up the building while it's on fire, yeah, you're sure giving it to him. You give him shit. Away. <laughs> you just kept running in, in the remake. Like, you, that, that voice line had no payoff. Yeah, I was just always a point. I, I'm glad the line was in there, but just placed it wrong. I like yeah. I actually paused the game. I was like, really, we're using that here? As the first time, like, why here? I got punched out. I'm of not it. even. I'm not even fighting him yet. I I got punched right out of it, so I couldn't even hear it. Oh, he decked you Ooh. on your way up. Yeah, yep. when I got punched by a dog, I kind of but the laugh because as soon as she said, "You want stars? I'll give you star." And she got one on top. Yeah. Happened to me once actually. I was like, okay then. I was in something. That that part of the game too, it, I've I see more often than not people get hit than they're able to hear that line, and I think that placement was just really fucking bad. Like when you yeah. think about it. I got lucky in my case because I blew him up. I just like started running, and then I heard that line, and I was just like, hey, could have been placed better. Like if it was me. When she says, when she actually says, take the fucking hint, I would have had the stars line there. And then when he was finally dead, then she would say, next time, take the fucking hint. Like, that's my personal opinion. I just don't get why. I just can't fathom why it's put there. I know we're kind of dwelling on it, but it's like, all you're doing is running from him. You're not going to turn around to stop him. So yeah. where does this line come from? Yeah, I'll give you stars by running the fuck in the other direction. Like that what? Makes, what does that give you? The whole that the whole makes level Joel hypocritical, but yeah. the the whole level is primed to run away from him anyway, since there's the vent in the other room. So yeah, his bad. Yeah, like place. you have to run. So it's like you're not gonna turn around and do anything to him, whether it's a cutscene or in gameplay, and nothing happens. But um, I think we need to move on to number four, Brandon's favorite. <laughs> Take oh, it away, boy. Brandy. <laughs> Take it. Pretty question, though. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, uh, Nemesis is a relentless pursuer um, in this title that stalks Jill throughout most of Resident Evil 3. He is treated as the main antagonist that will chase you around Raccoon City. How do you feel about this role in the remake? Okay, now. But Nemesis, I would say this right now, from the, from his new design, he looks cooler than his original. The nose is still freaky, man. Like, I don't like the nose. It's funny. I don't like the nose his, either. His overall, it's funny. his overall design does look better than the original. Now, I love how you no know, relentless he can be sometimes. And I do like the some of the changes they made with him, making him like Mr. X in the um in Resident Evil 2 remake. But no, on Hussein's boat level, on steroids, on higher difficulties. Inferno says now, hi. That being said, though, Nemesis in this game is a complete fucking failure. He is trash from the story perspective. Why? This man did not kill a single Stars member in this fucking game. Now, granted, yeah, he killed one. But his whole purpose, his whole mission was to kill Stars, right? How many did he kill? None. Oh, the most he did was kill a black man. Big Wolf. Like an area of horror <laughs> game out there. Damn. He did kill some survivors right. on the train. Yeah, but they're not stars members. 
Yeah, we talked about his initial mission. And go in uh, and kill SARS. He didn't kill a single SARS member. Like, why? No. That was yeah, the thing Umbrella designed him for, he did not do. It his is the most... His was... Uh, and I don't mean to cut you off, him, but, like, his mission literally was kill any stars member anybody that gets in your way from completing your objective or anything that gets in your way of completing your objective you're able to eliminate as well that's part of the reason why and he kind of does this in, in the remake too where he like pushes the fucking zombies out of the way but in the original he would literally kill any zombies or any other enemies on screen just to get to jail because that was his prime objective you know, yeah, he literally pops the heads off with a single punch. Like, why can't that be an aspect in this one? Instead of just him affecting the zombies. He didn't even hit him with a rocket. Yeah, he can shoot him with a rocket's arm um, if you were um, in his line of vision. So otherwise, they're meat shields. People have... Say, that's, that's useful. Get him out of my way. People have <laughs> made right? the weird argument that, well, Brad's a coward anyway, and he's not really a decorated veteran, but still... He kind of, Nemesis kind of failed in his mission parameters, so I, I, I would have liked it to where he kills Brad in front of Jill, if that's like an optional choice in front of the police station. And if they wanted to do the whole, well, Carlos shoots him down as a zombie, well, fair enough, but that should have been like an alternate scene if he did something different to that point. Heck, you know, I'll be okay with Nemesis infecting Brad. Like, he just stuck him with, he did the jail thing, was stuck him in the tentacle on his shoulder. Like, I'll be okay with that. Yep. Because at least he still completed his mission. He will die from that. Yep. But that's not even in the game. Like, that's, that's not even in there. Yeah, that's such a weird sort of a mission. I, I don't know why they did it. Um, Nemesis was kind of a letdown, personally, for me. Like, I like his design, but in story, he just, like Brandon said, he doesn't really kill any stars members. And, this is boss fights are, I used to, I actually did think they were really good, but looking back, his boss fights are pretty lackluster. Okay, here's the thing. Here's no, the his thing. boss fights are fine, except for the last one. I didn't like the last one that much. Yeah, the last one was post. not fun at all. I didn't like it. It was the, too easy. Now, I would say, though, it is better than the original because, no, it takes less work and, and to initiate the parameters, but on higher difficulties, that fight is so stupid. Like this man can literally do up to 10 slaps. Talk about the real gun fight, right? Yes, yes, the real gun. This man can do 10 slaps and quick cessation, and that could kill you in two hits. It's so that's, unfair. That's not, that's bullshit. That was literally, that's, li they turned that shit into hell and hell mode. I'm like, huh? That's, and that's with defensive coins too added on, because Brandon did show me this, that defensive coins do jack shit on Inferno. I mean, yeah, Ooh. that happened to me too. Oh, it does something. You take a hit. From Nemesis, a hit. It's like professional mode in Resident Evil on um, Five. A you hit. have like one slight margin of error. That's it. That's all it gives you. You so, can't afford to mess up one. They expect you to wrap it. I had to figure this out on my own during my pl Inferno playthrough. You, you have to basically mash the dodge button to get those triple dodges out. Okay, it's so, ridiculous. So here's the thing. Uh, here's what I think. I I think because. Nemesis shows up in less areas due to what they took out from the original It's why he's not much of a threat anymore because no clock tower That means no nemesis type 2 in the clock tower. No nemesis type 1 in the clock tower um, Where else the expanded city streets no nemesis encounters there? Um, then there's the acid fight. It's still kind of in the game, but it's not to the same effect if that makes yeah, sense, I felt like Nemesis Transformer way too soon. Yeah. Uh, too. I'm like literally like 30 minutes in or less. No, he doesn't man turn into um Doggo Nemi, which design wise actually looks cool and I like it. But I wish that was stage three rather than stage two or heck stage I wish four. they didn't reuse that fight again. I was fine with it when it was the first time around in the city, but in like the uh the second one I thought was stupid. Yeah, didn't yeah, do that, that again. At least in their fence, though, um, they did change it up, though, but it would have been perfect. Like, each time you fight Nemesis, it's actually a completely different form of Nemesis that you're yeah, fighting. Yeah, like. that's what I wanted. That's why I didn't... Uh, well, it's not the worst fight ever, per se. It was like... Yeah, I would have preferred if he transformed after every boss fight instead of fighting the dog again. He's also not in the RPD either, which is kind of disappointing. They took oh, out yeah. one of the most iconic jump scares. Like, you Good hear him deal. say stars and then go past the window and then he just pops out. He like, that scared cool everybody. The wall. 
Damn, Nemesis is gonna give it to you. I think there was also like this missed opportunity to, um, because you know they basically made uh, Nemesis play exactly like uh, Mr. X and Jack Baker, where you down them and they're only down for a few seconds, and I. I I really don't like that aspect of, for either Mr. X or Nemesis. I feel like they should have been both downable and it should have been for a significant amount of time like in the original games. In all fairness um, though, the games weren't designed around that either. So like I can understand why, you know, they they um got they need to get up like almost immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I can understand I, that. But um if, I'm not going to continue. I just left my train of thought. Um, I, I will say one cool thing about him, at least, is that he is fun to fight, like, in the times that you do fight him. And I like the fact that he has differing weapons. Uh, but on, like, lower difficulties, he's, he's, like, way too easy. He's just throw a grenade and he's done. My, uh, one of my first few times fighting him on my first run, I literally threw a grenade at his head it bounced off his head and his head actually reacts to it by the way um and mid-air the grenade like blew up and he got insta down so i thought that was pretty funny mm. the grenades are pretty strong on him you need a little bit more work on like nightmare or inferno but if you have like the special weapons then he's chump changed that's like just he's takes, nothing takes um, two grenades on nightmare and inferno yeah. What's funny to me is when you shoot a mine underneath, underneath like at the edge of the um, when he like you know the second fight of Nemesis in his second form where he jumps on top of that freaking tower in the remake where you yeah. shoot a mine underneath him, it still hits, it still hits him, and I'm like, wait, what? It still hits you? <laughs> Someone in the and demo. It's funny how he flops, it falls down, and it just flops in the thing. I'm like, ah, that's gotta hurt. Nemesis army. Uh, I love that. God damn. But that's mod. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> that's a question for later. I think we're pretty much good to move on to number five. So, um, Arlena, if you want to read off number five. Okay. Uh, let's see. How do you feel about most of the arsenal and equipment that Jill obtains throughout the game? Personally, in my opinion, when it comes to like the arsenal that she has, it kind of feels like minus. A flamethrower. It seems about average. Like when Claire got like all the all the other stuff. The only thing that would have been missing is as I'm on. I was honestly half expecting her to get like a flamethrower or something. I was just like, really, all this kind of stuff. Jeez. I, I I like some stuff about it. I like the burst pistol and everything, but and the fact that Jill got like an upgraded Magnum, but. Um, I kind of do miss the weapon variety of the original because it's like, where's the stuff like the freeze rounds and all where's the, the other... eagle? Yeah, the, the yeah, SCI eagle. I just remember what I was going to say actually. Thank you, Ren. Um, the mm -hmm. reward from Nemesis, you don't get much. Yeah, he just drops a lot of ammo and that's it. He drops only gun parts for the handgun, the basic handgun. Yeah, just, yeah, it upgrades the basic handgun. That's it. That's about it, really. Yeah, you used I mean, to that's get, like, nice, but once you get the burst pistol, you won't use it anymore. You got the custom nice. shotgun that was from Terminator 2. You got the STI Eagle. You got the first aid box. You got infinite ammo from Nemesis if you beat him enough times on, like, New Game Plus. It's like all that stuff. Uh, you, is just you gone. can get it on your first on this normal run. You gotta beat him every time you see him. Yeah. I didn't Basically. know that. Okay. When I saw those blue rounds, I'm like, oh, ice rounds. Then I'm like, they're mine. <laughs> they're mine <laughs> rounds. Yes. I was so mad. I got Admittedly, so though, that's, that's one change I don't mind because like most of us don't even use a mine launcher because uh, while it's <laughs> strong and I especially if like the infinite ammo or whatever. It actually um, has a heat tracker, so it will fly directly towards the zombie without you need, need to aim perfectly, which is pretty cool and all. But most of us didn't even use it, so I'm fine with them turning it into just a type of ammunition round for the grenade launcher, so that way people are at least forced to use it when the time has come. Yeah. Yeah. And it also I like, like the weapons. In the original, I only found it like very useful against hunters and zombies. That's it. Nemesis, it was like whatever. If you get them stuck in a the corner, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's yeah. some guns that I really like that they had upgradable parts for, but others that they 
left out is like well what the hell like i, I kind of did enjoy those weapons and there's no like enhanced ammo as well from what i noticed i was about to mention that <laughs> yeah yep. like we're forgetting the most important detail there's no enhanced ammo whatsoever it's the most yeah. most amazing aspect <laughs> of the original Oh my uh, God. Resident Evil 3. Now, granted, though, I didn't use it all the time because sometimes I always fuck up my combination. But uh, yeah, the most amazing aspect is the um, enhanced ammo, especially for the handgun, because it's much better than a shotgun enhanced ammo. Because you can stun like nemesis for each bullet. That's gone. That's that's gameplay mechanics gone. I see, and I'm glad you brought that up, Brandon, because like, because I had recently gone through RE7. And uh, funny, funny enough, some of the de de uh, developers that worked on RE7 also worked on RE3 Remake. And RE7 has enhanced ammo. And I'm trying to understand why they couldn't have done enhanced ammo for RE3 Remake. Granted, yes, it wouldn't have been like the original RE3 Remake, but it probably would have been streamlined, right? And that's fine, you know, if they have to streamline it, you know, so be it. I, I, I'm all for streamlining things if it's just for quality of life purposes, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But I miss the gameplay, like, you know, that obvious gameplay mechanic and, and, you know, general sense of being able to feel like your character has gotten stronger if you know what you're doing with your combinations of ammunition types. Because, you know, I do, I do miss the, you know, what was it, like the explosive shotgun rounds and the enhanced... Uh, handgun rounds which basically gave you like i think it was like full metal jacket rounds um so things like that and it's just like we don't have that anymore and it it also kind of decreases the the sense of variety in terms of what you can do with your gameplay yeah i wish they had something like that too oh i do like the improvement to the grenade launcher how you how you actually swap out the ammo is better. Yeah, yeah, yeah the is really good. That was a lot less cumbersome than RE2. Oh god, RE2 is gonna launch me. It was the exact same thing, actually. Is it the same thing? Did they not change yeah. it? Yeah, yeah you can do the same that thing. with you switch, uh, um, flame and ammo around by pressing a button. Wow, that flew right over me if it did. Alright, I'll take that back then. <laughs> I think the difference is you can like you can switch between like all three types, but it's still the same premise with RE2. Yeah, I must have forgotten them. The other thing too um, is that we lost uh, am like ammo type variety for grenades, uh, more so in two than in three, because I think they did bring back uh, if I remember right, they brought back explosive rounds. Uh, yeah, what was it on um, scattered rounds, uh, flame rounds, acid. And for Resident Evil 2, right? Unless I'm forgetting one. And for three is um normal grenade rounds, fire, uh, I believe acid as well, and freeze rounds, right? Yeah, for for the originals. But then in the remake, it was just fire and acid for for Claire, and then in three remake for for Jill, it's uh, explosive, acid, fire, and then mine. Which I you know. Oh yeah, wait a I'm minute! I'm glad that there's a new new type of round but at mm -hmm. the same time it's like i kind of want my nitrogen rounds again because that shit was fun there's nothing more fun than like freezing nemesis in place and watching him groan that that yeah, was the funniest was funny. thing <laughs> it was funny yep that never gets old m37 wasn't in the remake hmm the western the western custom m37 yeah that's the custom shotgun right yeah yeah, yeah, we yeah we mentioned as an end um, remake. That made me sad. I was looking at this. I'm like, that could have been lit. Yeah. Also, too, um, and you know, I, I know these were just special weapons for RE2 remake, but I would have liked to have seen like the other two Samurai Edge models that were in RE2 remake, because um, we didn't get to use Chris's or Wesker's Samurai Edge like we could in that game, um, and there was also. Uh, well, there was Kendo's Samurai Edge and also Jill's uh, Revelations model in that game. So it was kind of a missed opportunity to have more variety on that front as well. Did you complain yet about where her thing went? What? Uh, her Samurai Edge. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that. I remember yeah. you got super peeved about that when the game came out. Yeah, uh, I, for I completely forgot to mention that as a negative. Uh, just to kind of gloss over that, and I will talk about what Red mentioned in chat too. Um, 
I hate the fact that you get Jill Samaraj at the start of the fucking game and she loses it. And that does not make sense canonically speaking because, well, technically the canonical portion of Chronicles, she uses a samurai edge still. And in Revelations, even though your primary handgun is not the samurai edge, she does technically by lore have it upgraded by, uh, by Quentin Keith from Revelations. And the same goes for Barry. His samurai edge was also upgraded by Quentin Keith. So it's just, it does not make sense as to why why that stuff has been removed. But, uh, the Revelations nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, just, I haven't I, been playing Revelations in a while. Yeah, but, um, defensive items, yeah, that was also another thing that Ren brought up. That shit got cut. And, um, I know some people that did not mind that cut, but then I see that some people actually feel as though they could have kept both dodging and defensive items. They should have kept defense items because if a liquor or whatever or whatever grabs you, you know, you won't eat a lot of damage. Or a hunter. Yep. Oh god, and, hunters. Or you know, if Nemesis grabs you, maybe you have a chance to shove a grenade in his face. Which exactly. is kind of weird yeah. that you can't in the game. The, the yeah, I'd rather them I, have both. The only thing I will say is that I prefer the way that the knife has been redone. I don't like having durability on the knife. So I do think that that, that was uh, better done. You mean it's not yeah. made of plastic anymore? Yeah. Yeah. The knife's not breaking. Is a, that's a good thing. Because knives it's don't realistically break candy, just yeah. like that. I would say oh, that yeah. the knife was great for what they did with, like, no durability. And also the knife dodge is also pretty cool. Just the counterattacks in general, like, I really enjoyed that. I mean, um, Carlos's punch. <laughs> yeah, and the punch. I talked about that earlier, though. That was pretty fun. But I guess we're on number six now? Yeah, so, uh, actually, why don't we have somebody else read, uh... I'll do it. Drew. How, we haven't had Drew read, I don't think so. Okay. I can read if you want me to. Yeah, number six. Number six, okay, um... How do you feel about the standard enemies of Resident Evil 3 Remake compared to the original? Hmm. Fuck Hunters. Dan... <laughs> yeah, I hate... <laughs> to be fair, I, I don't feel like that opinion has altered from the original. Oh, I feel like everyone dude, says Fuck worse. Hunters no, no matter they're, what they, RE game. I they are worse so in this much. game compared to the I original. Mean, uh... Oh, at least they had a rule where you had to be at a half health to be one-shotted. Now it's like, nah, no, if so I feel annoying. like it, I'll do it. The most annoying enemy is probably the Drain Demos. They're, they're they were annoying too. To deal with. Like, because when they grab onto you and they just... If you have no herbs left, you just have to walk the entire whole place to get out of there. What, I'm like, what is with that animation? It shoves this whole thing down Jill's throat. I'm like, okay. I'm my seed in you, this, honey. This mm, thing got more game than Chris. It looks like a fucking hentai monster. Like, Chris got shit. one up by a fucking bug. <laughs> so, can, can I just talk about the drain demos really quick? <laughs> please, uh, please. Like, please do. So, I, I don't like that they basically are only in one part of the game. And they introduce a new mechanic that is never brought up in the game ever again. On top of the fact that they're basically now a hybrid between the original Drain Demos and also the Brain Suckers. I would have kept those as separate enemies and just scattered them out, like, more so. And I also would have kept the Dead Factory to, you know, have their, like, presence more increased in that segment. The new mechanic, I don't... I wouldn't say I don't welcome it. I do like that there's new shit in the game that you have to deal with as far as, like, what you're at risk of, like, or how much of at risk you are at, like, dying. Um, but the I think the biggest thing that I really don't like is that we lose things like, oh, we we got blue herbs back, but they're gone now. So why didn't we replace those with maybe yellow herbs to, you know, kind of counteract that and, and stuff like that? It's like... Capcom is like never, uh, never been like consistent with like how the healing mechanics work, and I, I I'm just kind of confused. Um, were the web spinners in RE3? They were, right? The spiders. Yeah, the the spiders. Yeah, yeah, they were. Why? Uh, I, I okay. I had a thought. It just hit me real quick. Hmm. 
I would have replaced the drain demos in that spot with web spinners. That whole thing would have been webbed as shit instead of the drain demos controlling the power plant. See, I would have had the demos somewhere else. I'm glad you brought that up because, um, you know, earlier, as I mentioned, there was concept art that kind of alluded to the fact that certain enemies like crows and spiders would have been in the game. At least the spiders would have been cool. Uh, like, you want to actually scare people. People are scared of spiders. You could have done that. Yeah. Dude, my worst I'm a fear huge ever. fucking arachnophobe, Capcom. Did you, you could have scared the living shit out of me, and I would have said for the first time ever, Resident Evil's scary. I would have done it. Damn. Bro. The spiders would have been very, would, would have been a perfect opportunity to scare people. Like, I hate spiders. <laughs> and they're, ha and they're hairy in the remake, so I'm like, they probably would have made them hairy in this game. There you go. It's no, giant honestly, though. No. The enemy variety in remake is actually pretty shit. Cause not only you got less, but not not long with the new enemy types they have, they're garbage. Like pale heads eat some they're like literally naked pale zombies. Pale heads are just they're, super zombies. They're yeah, they're, they're literally the naked zombies with franchise, which you know they eat a lot of ammo for some reason. Why? Because they had no clothes on. I didn't and like also that. the nemesis parasites enemies. I fucking hate those guys so much. They can stun like you. Oh, yeah. God, so damn. I, Wait, oh, who can sound like you? I'm gonna have a the, bit of a no, the, the beta parasites. Yeah. Oh, parasites. yeah. So, I, I kind of have a bit of a hot take with the uh, pale, pale heads. I actually don't mind their inclusion. I think it's a nice callback to Crimson Heads. Although, I kind of hate the fact that they work a lot like uh, regenerators in the sense that if you don't start, like, offing them very well, uh, they'll start regenerating and that's not a good thing. I like, think one I, magnum shot kills them, right? No. It doesn't? No. You gotta use, you gotta no. use grenade rounds on them. Uh, hmm. Man, Ren, don't you remember how many rounds you blew on them in your playthrough? I watched. I, I, I think... They took, like, your whole grenade round arsenal. They still didn't die. Yeah, for, for grenades, they probably take, like, more rounds. But I, I always thought that, like, one magnum shot killed nah, them. No, it takes uh, at least two, if not more. Oh, it's ridiculous. Okay. No, say, you will know if a pale head is dead if it stops smoke, like generating smoke. The smoke, yeah. And it stops regenerating its skin. And if it like, like it, it sort of moves over to the side and it just like doesn't move. Yeah, oh, it God. should have a. It, it literally should have a crater in its head, and it should not be smoking. <laughs> a crater in its yeah. head. <laughs> crater in the head. They but take too many hits to kill. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah, I actually like, like I said, I I know it's a bit of a hot take, and and people really don't like that enemy type, but I actually don't mind their inclusion because you know, like I said, it's it's a bit of a callback to Crimson Heads from Region One. Man, you know, fuck the combat, man. They cost so much ammo. Yeah, I mean, balancing <laughs> wise, yeah, I will agree. Like, I would have like only them. had them on the higher difficulty, personally. I feel like normal is a bit annoying. Over I, I would have had I less agree, of yeah. them on lower. Or at least, yeah, less of them. Yeah. No, they're worse than higher difficulties, man. They could come in with Nemesis Parasites on them. Like, no. Oh, oh that's yeah. Fun. Yeah, they yeah, can do yes, that. Yes, that Nemesis happens. Parasites. Yeah, I, you know, although if you, if you, if, if I had to pick between Pale Heads and Crimson Heads, I would have taken Crimson Head. For sure. Like, they keep leaving those guys in the dust. I mean, the heads would have been nice to see. I mean, they run, but they take a shotgun shell to the head, so it's like, whatever. Mm hmm. Uh, does anybody else want to talk about enemies, or are we good? I'm trying, to think about the I'm trying to think about the enemies, to be I'm honest. I'm trying to think about one, too. Let me think. <laughs> I pretty much said what needs to be said on them. We already shot on the hunters. That wasn't hard to do. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. I, I think the zombie enough. dogs are, like, so fucking annoying. They are. It's funny. There are, there's very little of them, actually. There's only like, yeah, two of them in the, in the thing. They're Unless super hard difficulties. Yeah. They're super they're weak. They're not that too, bad to take down. But on, on higher difficulties, they show up more. I noticed that I think they show up more in, in Nest, Nest 2. Nest yeah. 2. Yeah, that's the only time that happens. But hey, you know what? I'm fine with that because you barely see them anyway, so yep. I'm by it. Why don't we mm -hmm. have uh, Dan read off number seven? All right. Number seven, okay. Resident Evil 3 Remake gives the the option of higher difficulty levels with Nightmare and Inferno. Please describe your experience with these modes, oh. gentlemen. Oh, you want a description? Uh... Inferno's dumb. Do not bring it back. 
I'll Dumb. say this real quickly. Um, I didn't yeah. play Inferno Nightmare. I beat the game on normal, and I do want to go back to it at some point in the future. But I've heard horror stories about Inferno Nightmare. I have try. I actually <laughs> did go back and try Inferno without the rocket launcher, out the special weapons. Yeah, it's it's garbage. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> James is like my fun fact. It, gone. It's not even that's not fun. It's just bullshit. Everything's got a stupid beta parasite on it's its head. Like why? Everything else. Yeah. Right. The note. I made. I made it halfway without using special items, and I'm like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, see, even Brandon couldn't do it. Like, you dude, the, you need the infinite rocket launcher for the freaking final fight. It's ridiculous. Oh, good luck. Well, yeah, there's, a, there's almost nothing you can do for that final fight unless you either have the lightning hawk, but I would say the rocket launcher is the best because it's multiple pods. You can't even dodge. Yeah, Infern it. Infernal's not fun. There's nothing good about it. I think Nightmare should have been the highest and called it a day. So hold on, yeah. hold on, gentlemen. Uh, shout outs to people who did Inferno with no fucking damage, and they did it with no special weapons. Like you guys are real soldiers because I just don't know how. I basically what I don't have the patience to say, that. Basically, what Ren is trying to say is that you have huge fucking balls and you have every right to brag. Is that or you the have the way too much time needed. on your hands, either or. You're the hero. Hey, wrong bit. You learn again I, mean, I respect that, but it doesn't make it a good mode. Yeah, I, I still, I still, I was a okay with Nightmare being the last one. That felt more proper to me. Infernal's like, here's a mod. <laughs> Just in case you weren't pissed <laughs> off enough with the game. I think the, the 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 thing that got me in Inferno is the overuse of beta parasites. They're so damn obnoxious. And it's the same. They're, Inferno and Nightmare are the same difficulty with few exceptions. One, Inferno enemies are stronger. Nims yeah, because they're stronger. That's why it's a problem on versus Nightmare. And uh, of course, um, less less um item boxes, which doesn't even matter because even know your way around, you could get through A, B, and C with no problem. Yeah, the game short enough that it doesn't matter anyway. I think this really comes into action when you get grabbed by the parasite and you have full health and you just see your health be on danger after you're grabbed. It's really bullshit. I was going to say, yeah, you're you're pretty much done. You're done. <laughs> oh my god. You're sucked by the parasites, if you know what I mean. It's still not harder than RE5 on professional, though. It's nothing Oh god, no. Oh, RE5 is not near you. Oh, I'd rather, yeah. rather do RE5 on professional than Inferno. Yeah, I have a partner. <laughs> Not because of that, no. That There's no parasites. Me. Yeah, I worry about that. He constantly stunned like the dope. No, those plugas are not nearly as annoying as those freaking beta parasites. Yo, not not yet, at least. Oh, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, God. God damn it, we'll uh, get to that part. I'm going to read off number eight. Uh, do you think some aspects of this game can be salvaged with a director's cut or DLC? And my answer to that is absolutely. Um, I do think that they could come out with the fucking well, pull out like a uh, uh, pull a Devil May Cry and be like, oh, here's Resident Evil Three Special Edition or Nemesis Edition or whatever the fuck they want to call it, um, and you know, fix some aspects of this game, like change certain mechanics, add in new areas potentially, new enemy types, because Capcom has done this before. They've done this with previous releases, not only for Resident Evil, but for other games as well. But uh, Resident Evil most notably, because they've done that the most consistently. I think Revelations 1, <laughs> actually, when it got its uh, port. Are, are you uh, last, are the last, last escape, escape edition? edition? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, That'd be great, actually. I don't know. But that. yeah, I think like Revelations 1, they did uh, in particular, like, yeah, they, they added in uh, the what is it, the maggot enemy from RE6 and just reskinned it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so it's completely uh, possible that they could add a new shit. Um, for yeah, me. as far as... Oh, real quick, though. As far as Savage, uh, for DLC, no. It needs to be a new version like the rest of the Scott. Because uh, it, it, they need a lot of time for them to uh, add in more stuff because it's not going to be, unfortunately, overnight thing because, you know, they're adding more dialogue. They're going to add in more calm areas and whatnot. So, like, I, I'd rather have, a, like, a director's cut or just a less escape version, somebody mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I am honestly not optimistic about it. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah, look, 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 if you can fix Vanilla Ninja Gaiden 3... 
somehow some way and make it a little bit more tolerable i know they can probably fix this game if they did like a last escape edition it just the thing is, though, like in three's case though it's like one for one still the same game just it has better gameplay yeah yeah some slight tweaks and alterations to it but but the real problem just comes from capcom and them being lazy so it's like that's why i'm kind of less optimistic about it i agree because they've we've been asking for content for dmc5 and we've been asking for some extra content for re2 for a while now did not happen we got virgil dlc though virgil dlc <laughs> A shame they are, they're not doing anything more to RE3 remake. I thought there were going to be more DLCs. Yeah, it's it doing that shit for Resistance. Like, come on, man. Like, why does Jill have more costumes in Resistance than she does in her own goddamn game? Why is so why is the evil liquor, the green one, why is he in Resistance, but he's not in RE2 remake? It makes no sense. Or RE3 remake, for that matter. Yeah, I'm okay with that one. Well, I mean, he's not that... Well, he's a little bit stronger, so and never mind. I'm about to say, hold on, Chief. Yeah, he is. He nah, is stronger. <laughs> yeah, I'll see now. And Liquors for three, uh, you can't knife him, so I'd rather not deal with him in three. But two, yes. Mm-hmm. Two, they're way more annoying. No, they're easy in two. Just freaking knife him, though. And three, you know, you can't do that. I was never good at the knifing thing to be H. It's really easy. <laughs> it does, uh, you gotta dance around him. Ah, uh, that's why. I think in terms of the costumes too, like it, it's kind of annoying because you know that like Capcom can add in these costumes, especially because they're using RE Engine across the board now. So it's like it's not like they can't like carry over those assets and just patch them in now. And especially in terms of like just carrying over like older costumes we've seen, and I know this is a f- like following question, which uh, we'll bring up in a moment, but like. We've seen people mod in costumes from other Capcom games that were running on MT Framework into RE Engine. No problem. And they look perfectly fine. So I, I just don't see why they can't add in new, new things like that. I just posted my example. <laughs> <laughs> that looks badass. The, the only thing that's awesome. weird is the fishnet arm, but all right. Yeah. I guess that she's got right this year. Jill the bad yeah. bitch and this costume is resistance only so it's weird but it leads into the next question mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh ren i know you wanted to actually read off a question so you, you mind uh reading off number nine sure what are your thoughts on the resident evil 3 modding community cite some of your favorite costumes or fixes to the game so i already added one of the costumes from resistance which is jill and lever and glasses um there's also Mm -hmm. some more costumes from resistance and there's also uh people making like variants like i think there was one where someone made a variant of jill's uh costume but it was like rpd oriented and i thought that was really cool it's a it's a bunch of these about like the swat rpd variant yeah where she has like the um rpd vest and she's like wearing jeans i thought that was really cool and there's also the battle suit and everything It's it's like a bunch of these outfits that people are making um that is really impressive so far i I I love the um... uh the, the addition of the battle suit uh mod for re5 from re5 for jill it looks really good I forgot that was a mod. That's that was a good mod. They have a mod where they have um Jill's actress from um movie. Well, That's awesome. Resident Evil movies. Yeah, I'll be movies happy too. I would happy let Limses kill me if I had a mod on because I don't. Like <laughs> but yeah, the mods are great. I really like them. They are really great. <laughs> I love Actually, everybody no. that makes mods. Jill's sandwich the, costume that somebody made. Bro, I know the they Nazi. did um. The inevitable like Julia. Form. They already did Julia Voth's face, of course. That was gonna be the most. That was probably be the first mod on that freaking Nexus. Yep. You there's also know. there's also uh one where it's like what the okay I'm looking through these and I, I see Jill with her tongue out so okay here we go. Um, oh no! But <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I'm looking through these and they put the STI Eagle back and they also put in the classic uh Carlos outfit because. When, when you look at it, it's not the classic outfit. It's just the classic hair. So they completely put the green vest and the oh, black the vest on ugly. top. Yeah, so so they completely like put all that back for the U- his, UBCF members. His face shave looks so weird. He has like a butt chin now. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's really strange. 
I'd it rather see like Rugged younger. Carlos. It is God, cool that his is back home. DMC6 looks amazing, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys brought this up. I, I, I kind of tuned out for a sec, but... Uh, mm. I, there was um, <sighs> the recent mod for the UBCS members where they brought in all of their original like outfits. And oh yeah, I saw them. that. So like, Car Carlos looks exactly like what he would have in the original 1999 release. Uh, Tyrell, Mikhail, and they even shaved Mikhail, which which kind of looks weird, but you know, like oh no, you know, oh my god, uh, and then so why? Hot down. <laughs> oh god, they did it. That's just Mr. X's model just carried over. I like that the and first thing I see is Jill, but it's like Claire's hair and she's naked. Nemesis in a speedo. Amazing. Oh, god damn is it, this? Ren. <laughs> oh is my this? god, Ren. Dude, it's like, I don't even want, when we get into like the new mod territory, it's like, look, She's running around butterball ass naked and it's raining <laughs> and it's cold. Like goddamn the botters are so hilarious, dude. You know would be happy to see that. That that face. I think they also Damn. did a Regina mod too. They they, they, they did they had a Regina mod. Oh my god, really? They did shirtless Nikolai. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh oh, wait, oh wait, my wait. goodness. I, they did I, 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 didn't happen. Did a mod of okay. like they made RE3 remake like Dino Crisis where they replaced all the hunters as T Rexes. Oh, that's cool! I remember. Oh, that. I think I saw something like that. Yeah, that mod was really neat. There you go, Brandon. What is this beach bod Nikolai? Why, why, why is this here? <laughs> oh God! Hold on, I got one. I got one. Oh, I hate looking at him. Mega Man Carlos, behold! Oh, yes. Oh, I love behold! Yes. He's now, was that not cost for Capcom? <laughs> Come on, man. He's you are one Mega job, Man. Let's go. He's bad box yeah. art Mega Man. He's fat. Oh, that Mega Man. oh they're oh, putting the Capcom. resistance characters in. Interesting. Yeah, they are. They are. That's cool. It's like, it's like so much shit they could have done. And a lot of this stuff, like, probably wouldn't have taken as much time. Like, I'm still surprised, like, because RE2 Remake has the PS1 character models. Like, I'm surprised RE2 and 3. Or, not RE2, but RE3 remake didn't also add in PS1 character models. Like free, why? like RE2 did. That's a really weird oversight, honestly. I kind of expected them to do that, but they didn't. I was expecting uh, also to the classic soundtrack because, like, that was something they did for RE2 remake, and it's like it in that goes... regard, I can understand why they didn't because they literally remixed the original soundtrack. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I can understand that at least though. Which I'm so glad it did though, because it's such an amazing soundtrack. Yeah, that's one positive yeah. that I have to give. Like the music has been a lot more refined this time around as opposed to RE2, where it's like silent without the classic yeah, soundtrack. Like, the music was good in two, just the problem is you couldn't hear it. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> you just can't hear it. I, I just don't like it as much what? as this. Time. Oh my god. They well, James really found something there. worse. No, they, they did it. I think as Brandon posted it earlier. This is a meme now. Nemesis, oh god. New Nemesis? Oh no. Take a guess. It. Here you go. Virgil. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? <laughs> um, well, I mean, he does call Jill dead weight, so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> no, that, that's, that should be like Dante and I were hurt. Yeah, but I, I know it's just a parallel, like, regardless. You it really like disturbs it. me. It, it disturbs me how this RE engine has created this thing where the DMC characters and the RE characters can fit in each other's games and it actually looks legit. Yeah, like Carlos. It's kind of like, disturbing. They should, they should do a crossover with DMC and RE. I mean, Wait a minute. Virgil's I missing his eyebrows, but that. still. Wait a minute. That's still Nikolai's face, but with yep. fucking Virgil's hair. Virgil's hair and outfit. Yep. <laughs> Nikolai has like no eyebrows. <laughs> Question: Does Nikolai have your model, though? Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> oh yes, my he god! Yes, he does. Because the uh, he posted was it Brandon posted <gasps> one earlier where he, he has Yamato on his side. Okay, is... this looks more like Virgil now with his. Uh oh, up. actually, it's confirmed that he actually survived. Nikolai survived. Yeah, because he's you see a picture, you see a picture of him relaxed <laughs> on the bench, having a drink. I, I am. I'm, I'm, 
I'm gonna grab Hold this. On. I'm I'm grabbing this. Fuck it. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Hold on. <laughs> Red is like, ah, do we move? What the uh, fuck is that? Is a do we move? Foolishness, Joel. Foolishness. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's Back finish on top up this podcast because we've kind of diverted with uh, certain mods and stuff like that. Uh, Dan, <laughs> oh my Dan. god. Uh, actually, Dan, Hold did you go. read anything yet? You, yeah, just you said... told me to read number seven. Oh, okay. So who did anybody else not read? Andre didn't read. I don't think. I, yeah, Andre didn't read. Question. Okay, All right, uh, read off number, number ten. 10. Yep. Okay. Bonus question: What are your thoughts about Capcom connecting the Nemesis lore to Resident Evil 4's Lost Bogas? This was a new description that was added to Resident Evil Resistance. Um, it's kind of interesting, I guess. I I know they're doing RE4 remake in the future, but. I'm guessing with RE3, they're alluding to something and going forward. So, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see how that turns out. Uh, I personally didn't so, like it. I don't sense, like the idea like, making that. I, yeah, I don't get why they decided to make that two connections. Especially since they're completely different type of parasites. Yeah, I said it earlier, like, I'm 50-50, like... I understand that Los Plagas was around during the 90s, but what I don't get is how Umbrella, if they knew it was around during this time to make artificial Los Plagas, why didn't they utilize this faster if they know it's stronger? Exactly, and, especially since um, they became unfossilized once you removed them from the source. Yep, that's how the village got infected. So, like, wh where was this at? Like, see, like, they could read another plot hole. I. So it depends on how play... they do in the future for me. So I kind of want to like point out uh, a few things here. Like, um, so I, I I was under the impression that resistance initially was partial canon, but then they had changed that to be completely non-canon. So I don't know if I should like if any of us should take this as like this is going to actually happen for RE4. If anything, this might just be a little like not hey we. We might be remaking RE4. Maybe the leaks are true, right? Uh, but on the other hand, if it is, you know, partial canon, uh, and at least this portion is, uh, what I could assume is that what they want to do, because RE4 is very disconnected from pretty much all the other Resident Evil games uh, <laughs> in terms of, like, lore that came before it, uh, maybe they want some more <laughs> direct correlation from, you know, going from three into four. So. Uh, what in the actual yeah. shit? Yeah. He survived. Yeah, that's he, his that, like, special model. Like, yeah, that's he survived. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. I see what you did there. Yeah, he survived. See? <laughs> he just going on vacation. <laughs> He survived. <laughs> Nikolai is just chilling, you know. He's just drinking some martinis. <laughs> he didn't cause destruction to a city. He didn't kill people, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, Nikolai never appeared after RE3. He retired and decided, you know what? I I'm just going to sit on my chair and drink some martinis. But uh, let's get back on topic. Uh, what do you guys think about the supposed connection between RE3 and RE4? Plagas. For me, it all depends on when 4 Remake shows up, how they choose to take information from 3 and implement it. Especially yeah. with, like I said, the intro explanation. It really depends mm -hmm. on how they try to tie it. I need to see 4 Remake and how they want to approach it first. Oh, another thing. This actually creates a problem in the long run because of Resident Evil 5. Like, depending on what they do and how they change the Lost Plagas lore, they had to remake 5. Oh god, don't remake five. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Change no, five. No, let per okay let perfection remain. No, shush you. Uh, no 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 no. I actually I'm okay with <laughs> you know, I know Brandon wanted to see an RE five remake. At this point, I I kinda wanna see what it would look like in RE engine, just just to see. Like um, I mean, cool to see. for the aspects of his original concept. Because I like the idea of Chris, like, if this is true, of course, like, getting different partners. If him being, like, similar to what happened in 4 with Leon, him being a one-man one army against all these, well, Africans. Why don't yeah, they remake 6? Yeah. <laughs> sure, I'll I take I am, I am a thousand percent confident, and I'm going to probably get shot in the foot later for saying this. I do not think they're going to go past 4 remake. 
At least they're, no. I don't think they're gonna bounce into the PS3 era. You know, yeah, we said the same thing about um, Resident Evil 4 and look what happened, so anything is possible now. Yeah, and, and, and I remember I was telling everybody, I was like, look, RE4, they're gonna fucking remake it. They I agreed. I knew they. I knew on, they right? were definitely gonna try. They, I knew they were gonna do it, but it's just really not a good idea. I'm I like, said oh, I yeah. thought it would be a bit of a gamble for them, but I guess not. Capcom's like, woo, fuck it. I it's think done. what they should have uh, done at least did on um, Cold Veronica. I think what they realized was that RE4 is their cash cow, so this is why they're milking that as opposed to uh, Cold Veronica. Uh, Cold Veronica would have been interesting, but it, it feels like this is just a money move. It's it's their final milking. They got to go out with the thing. Same for zero really zero. Remake. Zero's yeah. like systematically broken. Like if they remade that, I'd zero. be totally fine with it. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So really I, hate zero. I, I hate zero. Yeah, I love that response. Just I'm casually, I hate zero. I hate also, zero. I, I, unless Capcom's got nothing better to do, I don't feel like they're going to mess with Code Veronica because it did not sell well. It doesn't matter if it's sold well or not. No. It didn't sell well. Oh, it it wouldn't matter if it's sold well or not, it. though. They need, need to remake it because it does tie in with the feature series. Brandon, like, it does you, play you, a you, hold on. You say need. When has Capcom ever cared? They're going to fuck it up again anyway. Or so, they care enough to make RE4. So the thing with Code Veronica is that it's actually still one of their... Even though it is the like one of the lower selling Resident Evil games, it's still in the top ninety six selling uh, Capcom games of all time. Uh, so technically, there is no reason why they couldn't remake it or why they shouldn't. Um, and actually, I think a, a remake would probably sell a lot better this time around, especially because if they could fix the gameplay and make it more fun. Uh, That's I, what I would assume as well. I'm just, I'm just trying to think about it from their perspective. Maybe they were just not confident in the idea. Also, hold on. We can also use that same mindset with Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil One um, remasters because uh, they actually did some update um, update textures and whatnot. They could have just left, like, left those games on the GameCube and think nothing of it, but they poured it over and it sold better. So what's yep. stopping them from actually doing the same thing here? The thing about yep. Code Veronica is they would have to remake that game because if I'm being brutally honest, I did not like that game that much. I felt like the second half was just a goddamn chore with Chris and the Poisonous Hunters. So hopefully there is those mechanics where it's like, yeah, they probably could use some stuff from Remake 3 and uh, have more like defensive, offensive options. I think you don't like using your guns halfway through the game and not realizing that was going to happen? Uh, yeah. I didn't like that. They literally do not warn you. Like, what the fuck? That's kind of a big whoop. I, I think with, like, you know, because I know this is a little bit off topic, but if they were to remake a Code Veronica, and I know we are planning to do a what we would want out of a Code Veronica remake, I feel like they would change some of those aspects. Like, Chris would get his own set of guns that he would specifically have. Ammo and, and health items would be not tied between the two, well, technically three characters that you play as. Um, Steve and and uh, you know things would just be altered for the better in, in terms of gameplay but um, I know that's a little bit off topic uh, for the actual main question I, I do th in terms of RE4 like um, because it is the least connected Resident Evil game or one of the least connected Resident Evil games in the entire timeline they would probably try to or what they're trying to do is have more connections to the previous entry and possibly other entries within the series because i think uh what was it the in the original it's only the intro scene the small tidbits of umbrella like trying to get lost plug us with like ada and, and ada krauser and uh, wesker uh and also, I believe, what was it? Uh, Lewis making some like comment that he saw the T virus uh, samples in the lab. So, so I think with the, with the RE4 remake, there's a lot of potential for them to do like more connections. So, all right, uh, any more thoughts on this particular question? No, Dom pretty much took mm -hmm. it. I'll, I'll say nope. that with oh. the connection between RE3 and 4 with Nemesis and the Las Plagas, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, in all honesty, because I do not see any 
connection that they would try to have there. The only thing I can think of, my... especially since um, the inconsistency of those cannon status of resistance. So like, we gotta take that for granted, so for sure. Yeah, and the only thing I can think of is that maybe it was a failed experiment, but even then, it's like you know they still have to explain why Umbrella didn't capitalize sooner than later. So, uh, but I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt. I, I want to see what happens. I wouldn't mind more good connections of RE4 uh, being tied to the series, but they have to make sense like they did in Remake One, where. I mean, I could believe Birkin being jealous of Alexia. I could believe um, Lisa being the test bed for the progenitor and the G virus and everything because it made sense. So yep. I guess we can move on to the last one. What is your final rating for Resident Evil 3 Remake? Um, I'm going to give it the same I did in my review. It was a 7, 7.2. Yeah, 7. I, yeah. I, think, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing, too. It, I think it's a good rating, 7. It's a good game, but the problem is, like, just most of the cut content. I'm sure, like, some people will probably say, like, a 6 or 7, but it's no higher than that. Brian's going to be, like, a negative 2. Sure. Is <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> as a game, as a game... On its own, even as a Resident Evil game, it's a solid seven or maybe even eight, because it's mechanically sound and it's really fun to play. But yeah, as a sure. remake, mm -hmm. it gets a three or a four because it's a bad remake. I agree. Reimagine Wave One Call it though. They dropped the yeah. ball hard compared to its, its predecessors. Mm -hmm. I, I think I. I think many people uh, say. I think many people say it's a good game, bad remake. Per yeah. yeah. Perfect um, way to describe it. All I have to say is, um, uh, it's a good game. I do like it, but I think it came a little too early. I feel like the game should have come out like a year or two later after RE2, but that's not saying a rush game is a bad game. It, I still enjoyed it for what it was. Oh, one more note. This game is definitely not worth $60. Get it on sale. Like, yeah, I know it comes with um, resistance. But resistance not the treat resistance as its own entity entity. So you have to look at Resident Evil 3 as Resident Evil 3. It's not worth sixty dollars. Get this it's shit on just the game is thirty dollars max. Yeah, take. thirty, forty dollars even, even if that's a little stretch in it. But it's not worth sixty. Not even by a long mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. Yep. For uh for myself personally, like I I enjoyed the game for what it was, uh, but I definitely agreed that it's not a perfect remake. Um, definitely agree with I, I don't know like if I would agree saying that it should be purchased at, at half price I think that's a little bit like subjective per, per individual um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like I, I want to hold off on like that in particular because I do eventually want to review this game on my own channel so like I don't want to say something and then be like oh well if somebody saw this and saw what I had to say on that they'll be like oh well well th things though dumb the reason why I put it like that is because you get far less compared to Resident Evil 2 Resident well, Evil 2 no, no, you get I, more I, I, I know I'm just talking like for for like when I end up reviewing this game on my own channel like I don't want to give out a like solid answer now personally just because when i think about it if, if i give out a solid answer now it'd be like well that kind of defeats the purpose of reviewing it doesn't yeah, it? your mind your mind so, is going to change with your own review later so, on so yeah so i'm like i, I mean you know i'm gonna hold on change an actual time, answer so, so, wrong with yeah. so um but i will say like in terms of like like should you play it like uh, i mean i would say so I, th I think it was it was worth playing um the only thing I will say on, on like kind of like a final note in that regard is that I hope uh, with with that said, like for future remakes, uh, there is more of a is the, the problem with both RE2 and RE3 remake more so in, in terms of RE3 remake is that um, future RE remakes need to have the consistency down because the problem is, is that uh, if we're trying to remake things to partially be up to speed with all the new shit that's in in lore but also to improve on gameplay and stuff like that then we need to have a uh, somewhat of at least in terms of lore for the most part consistency in how things have been changed because like you know i i'm i'd mentioned like the samurai edges for example you have uh in remake 2 you have jill samurai edge and it looks completely different in re3 remake and it's like well 
why did that have to change if you literally already had a model for it in the previous game? You know what I'm saying? So it's um, it mostly um, comes down to lore consistency, if anything. Because now, if they make these little changes, though, that actually will make a ripple effect for future games. Yeah, so it's um, like, and it's pass, the little course. details, even the larger details too, that that count. So the consistency in, in that needs to be spot on for the next, like whatever the next remake is, whether it be RE4 or you know a complete, completely different RE game, if not other Capcom games, if they decide to go down the remake route. So as I said, RE1 had it perfect with the updated timeline. Nothing really felt out of place. Even even the fucking Crimson has made sense. Yep. So I, I just hope that they take that into account for the next iteration and also realize that, yes, it is cool to have like elements from RE 3.5, but also um, keep in some of the stuff that people liked from RE 4. I don't mind if they try to go on an action horror route, but you know, keep things like witty Leon and keep things like, you know, um, some cool horror elements like later in the game, because I did enjoy, uh, the stuff with the regenerators, but I, I feel like if they lose out on a lot and they don't add anything pertinent, then RE4 has the capability to be messed up very easily. Hmm. Yep. Cause it's it's a it, it, someone said it best. I don't know what podcast it was on, but they said they could screw this up even more easily than this game, and that's honestly a feat. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess we're gonna do outros now. If everyone's done with rating, unless if somebody else wanted to say their final thoughts on RE3 remake. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, say, go, I'll say this. Oh, okay, I'll say this. Some parts of the game, in my opinion, did feel a little rushed. And sometimes that would take me a little bit out of the game. And there are even like some jump scares were good. Some jump scares were like, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Nemesis was okay, in my opinion. And some of the areas were pretty decent i would say if i gave it a rating it would be probably be a 7.5 it's not good it's not bad it's just slightly in between dan dune uh ah rip dan dan i think he's dead oh. okay. what i was gonna say um <laughs> Oh. For what oh. Ren was going on and how they could change RE4 with RE3.5 aspects is like, um, just do it in a way where basically the, hallucin the hallucinations start in the scene where Leon, like, falls over in the cabin. You see him, the Plagas moving around in his veins. From that point forward, you're like, you're fighting enemies. You stop at a certain point and then you start having, like, hallucinations of the hook man or something like that. I think they might save most of that for RE8, but that's another discussion entirely. <laughs> RE8. That'll be a long while. Yep. All right. I think we're good for outros, uh, so why don't we get started? Dan, where can we find you, sir? You can find me on Twitter at EDirtyDan, triple underscore, and YouTube at TheDirtyDan, no underscore. Alrighty. Uh, Drew, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at AldraGamer, R-E-3, and YouTube, AldraGamer. And then after that, Arlena, where can we find you? All right. So you guys can basically find me on Twitter at Arena K. You can find me on YouTube, Arlena Bloodgrave, and even on Twitch, Arlena Bloodgrave, if you want to see me stream whenever I get the chance. Alrighty, and then Andre, where can we find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter at um. Hmm? Oh sh. Uh, you can find me at Twitter Andre B Venom, but yeah. And then James, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Dev Hunter James. Alrighty, 
And then Brandon, how about you? Where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at the Hero James. I'm just kidding. You can find me on Twitter at Immortal <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> Oh my god. The most ancient yeah. gamer tag known to mankind. <laughs> I killed them. Now they added numbers to it instead. <laughs> Bam. Ren, where can we find you? Oh, what oh the, that whoa. was some weird static. Was weird... But yeah. uh yeah, you guys heard that. It sounded like, sound like something exploded in Super Mario. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but uh you can find me on Twitter at Ren Operative underscore. You can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative uh i'll be putting up this podcast pretty soon on the ies channel and i'm gonna be playing haunting ground really soon so i can do my first impressions so look forward to that next week hey, hey. And then my yeah. guys can find me as bio devil underscore dom pretty much everywhere youtube twitter twitch now instagram uh Basically, uh, I have content in the works, but I don't know when I'm going to release it yet because I have to kind of manage my time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you <Eat, eat laughs> <off, laughs> <Bio-Devil. laughs> No. Oh, oh, no, Dom doesn't have Dom on OnlyFans. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, Dom. We totally have an OnlyFans of me. You should totally check it out. No, actually, you can find Dom on Twitter at CacomFan2010. Oh god. <laughs> donate Damn. to his Domtreon. Yeah, Dom donate Trion. to my Patreon. Uh clearly the IS is just too good for me. Uh no I'm not. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh anyway, yeah, that's where you can find me is biodevil underscore Dom at those places. Uh don't know when I'm gonna do more content. Uh just more so I have to manage time. But aside from that, you guys can probably look forward to more content in the IS very soon. Uh, and that is pretty much everything that we've got going on. I think we have other plans in the works for more episodic discussions and stuff like that. So look forward to that stuff. And in the meantime, we will see you all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.